The retention of Section 377A is a non-amendment, yet its retention has attracted the, the most press. Some argue to repeal it and provide reasons to support their position. Others say repeal because the law is archaic, not abreast with the times, displays Singapore to be inflexible. I do not agree with this position and provide a number of arguments in support of retaining Section 377A and in so doing, record my support for the bill. The first argument is a basic one. It involves the possible consequences of repealing Section 377A. A repeal of Section 377A will not merely remove an offence. It is much more significant than that. Because of the concept of negative liberty, the removal of Section 377A puts homosexual lifestyle on par with heterosexual lifestyle. It is to accord both lifestyles a sense of parity. As a result, homosexual lifestyle no longer remains private, but travels into spheres traditionally reserved for heterosexual couples. The point I make is this. It is a misconception to argue for the repeal of Section 377A on the ground that what goes on behind closed doors will not affect us, so no point criminalizing it. It is also a misconception to argue that what is private will stay private, and therefore there is no harm repealing Section 377A. Such arguments are incorrect. The truth of the matter is that if we do repeal Section 377A, what is in private will not remain private. There are far-reaching consequences. If it is repealed, arguments can be made that rights accorded to heterosexual couples must be accorded to homosexual couples. This has happened in many jurisdictions, the United States, UK, Canada, Denmark, Netherlands, to name a few. In Singapore, we have had recent calls by lobby groups advocating the trumping of minority interests over wider society's preferences and priorities. This argument is attractive. But really, what are the consequences? What if Section 377A is repealed? Surely the answer to this must be weighed in the balance. So let us consider the consequences of repealing Section 377A. One major consequence is the effect that such a repeal may have on the institution of marriage. Take Massachusetts, for example. In the case of Goodridge against Department of Public Health, the US Massachusetts court ruled that a law denying marriage licenses to same-sex couples was unconstitutional. The court disagreed with the argument that child-rearing was best performed under the care of a heterosexual couple. It is the same situation in the United Kingdom except that gay marriages are termed same-sex civil partnerships. In fact, the law in UK is entrenched in the Civil Partnerships Act of 2004. Under that act, a civil partnership is defined as a relationship between two people of the same sex, which is formed when they register as civil partners of each other. Perhaps some supporting the repeal of Section 377A may say, well, that does not matter. That marriage relationship can still be private. It does not pervade common space. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. There has been recent judicial opinion in the United Kingdom that the Civil Partnership Act 2004 grants to same-sex couples the same legal recognition that the law grants to opposite-sex couples. It allows them a formal status with virtually identical legal consequences to those of marriage. Incidentally, the United Kingdom is the jurisdiction with which Singapore law has the most intimate relationship. What happens there could happen here if Section 377A is repealed. So, this is not a private matter between two consenting male adults. It is a public matter, the effects of which will be felt by all in wider community. Adoption by same-sex couples may be the second consequence of a repeal of Section 377A. Is this far-fetched? No. UCLA School of Law reported in March 2007 that to date 10 states in the US allow same-sex partners to adopt children as couples. About the same number either implicitly or explicitly state 
that sexual orientation cannot legally prevent homosexual persons from adopting. The same 2000 report from Williams Institute, UCLA, states that gay and lesbian parents are raising 4% of all adopted children in the United States. Is this just a US phenomenon? No. The International Journal of Law, Policy and the Family stated in a 2002 report that the Danes have since removed the prohibition, prohibition on same-sex couples adopting, while the Netherlands has expressly de legislated to permit such adoptions. This has forced societies to accept what some academics call the modern family in its many variations. Do we want our family-centric culture and the traditional definition of family to be threatened? They will be if Section 377A is repealed. This is not just a private matter. Another consequence if Section 377A is repealed is the effect it will have on spousal rights. Same-sex partners may be statutorily entitled to benefits because of their newfound spousal status.